Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope everyone's doing well out there. And you're looking at the Zebra Bad Cat kit guitar. I've got a couple of coats of the 2K Glam Clear or Clear Glam, something like that. And it's looking pretty good. And after this cures, I'm going to do a level sanding on it and apply some more coats on it. Right now it's just kind of a filler coat. Uh, any imperfections in the wood or something, this is going to fill it up. So I kicked the Line 6 AUX2 out of here, and now I have the X put in its place. I have the X uh, Solo, which is going to be on the other computer, but for this computer here where I do most of the recording and stuff on and have all the software on, uh, this X is going to be in its place of the Line 6 AUX2, which compared to the X, the Line 6 AUX2 has nothing compared to this. And I gotta say, um, I haven't had any troubles with uh, drivers. I haven't had any troubles with trying to set the uh, Amplitude 5 or my recording software to a different audio interface uh, other than what I'm using in order to trick it to work correctly. And as you see, I got my NUX wireless uh, system on the audio interface and I've been using I kind of this is kind of like my go-to guitar now uh, this is the not a Gibson but it will soon be labeled as a Chipson permanently thanks to Jeff at uh, Diamond Cut Graphics USA you can find him on eBay uh, He's sending me some Gibson logos for the headstocks of my Gibson, so I don't say Gibson anymore. This one here, it's got the P90s gold top, uh, gold hardware. I did a lot of modifications to it, and I got to say the P90s sound awesome. I thought they sounded good with the Line 6 uh, audio interface and using the pod farms and gearbox and stuff, but no, uh, it sounds better with Amplitude. A lot better, especially plugged into this thing. So... What you got here, I got four channels on this guy. First channel here, you have, uh, it's either going to be an instrument, a line in, or a microphone. Second channel is the same thing, but the first channel has a little bit more options on there. Uh, it has what's called a Z-tone, which kind of bends the signal a little bit uh, as it comes in. And also gives you, the first channel also gives you a uh, selection between uh, passive and active equal. Uh, Pick, pick up sorry and then the gain control you can adjust so you're not clipping on the first and second channel now everything else kind of runs through into the control panel for the audio interface which is kind of nice and even though i like having the uh meters on the audio interface uh like the line six did you know everything for this is now on the computer so right now i'm playing an audio file and you're kind of looking at that audio file play but if i take this monitor and i adjust this to center okay you will still have audio playing into the computer but now i'm kind of blending in whatever channel I have my guitar plugged into without any effects or if I open up the program for Amplitude 5 then I can I'll have the effects but if I turn this all the way to the other side that gives me strictly whatever's coming into the audio interface and nothing on the computer so basically you're canceling out whatever is on the computer or going through the computer now if I go ahead and I turn this back up See, now I end up getting music through the audio interface into the computer, and uh, it's showing me my signal, and it'll play through the headphones. Now, it has some presets over here, and I think it's for microphones. I'm not too sure what it is. I do have to look into it to see what they are. It has a built-in tuner. The Solo does not. Uh, I already talked about the monitor. And then you have your headphones. Now, the... The headphone output on this, the preamp, is, is, is really nice. Um, it's very ballsy. 
it's got some power to it if you do have really good headphones not real cheapies and stuff to where they distort really quick you can actually run some power into them and it still sounds clean it doesn't start clipping on you until you really really turn it up all the way to max then you might get a little bit of clipping uh, some distortion in the headphones even on good quality headphones you will get some distortion the master is a master out to a amplifier and on the control panel program you have that setting right over here as well to where you can adjust the output of it and it shows you exactly like you can mute it uh you could do a ground lift on it um, you can mute the monitor on this. You can mute the channel 1 and 2 coming in on this, and you can mute channel 3 and 4. Right here would be showing you your guitar, your instruments, uh, either this one or this one, uh, whichever one, the 1 and 2. Uh, it also tells you if it's on mic. Like right now, I have nothing plugged into channel 2, and it's showing you as a mic. Channel 1 is showing as an instrument with the green light. Um, and then you could sit there and click this to uh, out to amplifier so it'll be going out to the amplifier it's kind of nice it, it works a lot better i haven't had any problems with uh amplitude 5 or even uh studio 1.5 for recording like i was with the line 6 ux2 um and i got rid of everything that was line 6 on the computer because amplitude 5 uh is a hell of a lot better it just comes with a lot more options and there's a lot more to play with a lot more tones nice thing about this audio interface as well is i can loop a uh pedal into this thing or a bunch of pedals into this thing and be able to control them on the fly through through the audio interface like if it was an amplifier and so i really don't need to use uh, amplitude 5 if I don't want to I can just run it all through the X kind of nice so on to bigger and better things so I brought her in from outside it's pretty much dry to the touch it's got a beautiful gloss finish on it I love this 2k I ordered uh, four more cans of this stuff uh, I almost really don't have to do any type of a level sanding or even possibly a buff on this thing from the way that it looks. And when you see it from the back uh, on the body, I'll put my hand close to it and you can see the reflection. It's like glass. This thing came out really nice. I really like that 2K spray. Um, cure time is like 24 hours, but uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a little bit longer than that. So I'm really loving this new audio interface. It's a lot different than what I'm used to, uh, and I'm going to have to get used to how different it is. But I like it a lot, and it works really good with the programs that I'm using as far as recording. Uh, again, Amplitude 5 and the um, Studio 1.5 is great programs. I'm really loving how this guitar is coming out. And i got to say, that 2K spray... Um, mixing it and everything else the bad thing about it is is that if you're going to mix a can you better use a can because it, it doesn't have a very long shelf life after you mixed it up so once you pop the bottom of that can and whatever the hardener is that's inside there starts mixing in with the paint shaking it up really good uh, again it has a shelf life so I've ordered four more cans of that. I still have uh, about five more cans of the sanding sealer, and I want to uh, stockpile that. As long as I don't puncture or pop that thing on the bottom of those uh, 2Ks, I'll be all right. And I think I'm going to stick with my plan. The guitar right now is in pretty good shape to where I really don't have to do any level sanding and really don't have to do any buffing on it. It actually came out out of the can really nice today. The weather is nice outside. It's a little bit on the windy side, but it worked out perfect. Uh, let it stay outside for a while to kind of air out so it doesn't stink up the basement over here when I hang it, in the, you know, hang it up to cure up the rest of the way. Don't ever spray any type of aerosol paints in your home. If you care about your house and you care about the things that you own, like furniture and whatnot inside your house, 
uh, spraying inside your house with an aerosol paint, eat, like the 2K stuff, it, that shit gets all over everything. There's an overspray that comes off of it. Even if you have really good ventilation, there's still an overspray in the air, which will settle on your furniture or property or whatever inside your house. Plus the smell. Even in a room with good ventilation, uh, being in a garage or something that's got good ventilation, you still have that smell linger in the air, and it's not good for you. Now, I sprayed this outside, so I didn't wear a mask. Didn't really need to because I was in an open area, and it wasn't blowing in my face. If I was in the garage spraying this, I probably would have wore a mask. Uh, but don't ever spray anything indoors as an aerosol paint, uh, regardless if it's a 2K or not. Between the overspray, the chemicals, the smell. Also, you know, it's very flammable. So if you have a furnace running or a furnace close by or something like that, um, it, those fumes can ignite depending on how much or how heavy you're spraying, how many coats you're putting on, and how thick the fog is in the room. So you got to be very, very careful with that. So things are working out pretty good. Um, I have another body that belongs to somebody else but i haven't started working on it yet because i don't want to work on two projects at the same time this one is a totally different thing that i've been working on. it belongs to a friend named george uh he's also on youtube and it's not uh the george that i've been you know working on his guitars for this is you know somebody totally different and it's a little bit unusual of what he wants done but it makes a lot of sense to me and to him of what he wants to have it done. And I'm more than happy to work on it for him and get it done for him. But right now, I just want to tackle one project first before I get into another one. This way, I have my countertop clean over here for something new to work on instead of having two projects at the same time going on at once. So you guys take it easy. Have a good one. And I'll catch up with you all later.